Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and it's the second episode of What's Up Wednesday. So anyway, I have a cute little mini to show you that is made from um, long envelopes, the number 10 envelopes. Um, it's got a chipboard back and cover on it, and then it uses six envelopes um, inside. So essentially, that section right there is the envelope. So you have a pocket at this end where you can put photo mats in. And then I've also created flap. Um, and then it creates a pocket on this side that you can put tags or whatever in. Flips over. Again, pocket, pocket, flap. So you can have, you know, a tag that goes in the pocket. You can have journaling or photo here. This works like a photo mat. Journaling or photo here. Journaling or photo here. And it keeps flipping that same way. Pocket, flap, pocket, pocket, flap, pocket. And it continues on through for six with six envelopes in there. This one is just got the papers attached to it. I haven't put any of the embellishments. I'll probably do something to cover the spine, but as you can see, doesn't really need it. But what you're gonna need is you're gonna need six envelopes. You can use just the plain ones that open, you know, just like the ones you get in the mail, the ones you have to send your bills in. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, um, and then I get these nifty ones that have this flap at the end, so they open at the end. I get these at a local um, stationery and paper store called Paper Zone. They're also in Oregon and California, and I think they're online. Um, and they come in all sorts of colors. But what you're going to start out with is you're going to need to cut your envelope down so that it's nine inches either from like this end to th this end so that creates an open pocket at this end or if you're using just standard ones like you get anywhere you're gonna have it it's gonna be open at both ends you're still gonna be able to create this flap here um, regardless of what kind of envelopes you use you're going to be making a score and a fold three quarters or three quarters three and a half inches from one of the ends. So you're going to have a three and a half and a five and a half inch. So when you fold it, it kind of looks like that. So here's the ones like I used. So, and what's going to happen is you are going to, I've got one started here. You're going to have, see, here's this, this, whoops, I got it upside down. Here's um, essentially that envelope and it attaches to the larger section or the bigger section of the envelope just previous to it. So here's the envelope. Let's see if I can get this better in camera. Here's this envelope and see this short section attaches to the back side of that envelope. And it just goes on through that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to, as I said, you fold that and then you're going to use some sort of adhesive. Now I like using the terrifically tacky red tape because it's really strong. Um, just along this edge along the fold. Now I come in about Oh, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch in from this this folded edge because what that gives you is some breathing room here for this to expand see when you just got them all um, nothing else in there they're about this narrow but as you start to add papers and photos and embellishments it gives it some expansion room see how I can expand it almost twice the, or over twice the width of what it is so it gives some breathing room for all that stuff because as you can see here, this one lays relatively closed. I've got the papers in, but none of the embellishments are photos. If um, And that's going to fill it up, and it's not going to be quite as close. Now, if I had this taped right at the edge, this would already be going, Whoa! So they look overstuffed a lot more. So this just gives it, you know, that accordion kind of breathing room. I know, I'm weird. Um, so that, that has some space for all the goodies to go inside of it so um so have your tape backed off a little i then use my atg gun and put adhesive or the rest of it you can use your favorite kind and then this is that large area on that one this will attach lining up along that spine lining up sticking that down after you've done that you're ready to start decorating it with some papers and what i've done here then it, and the measurements are on my blog at following the paper trail dot blogspot dot com so you're gonna cut um, I cut my my paper into six by twelves I have some kits coming up that have six by twelves and those six by twelves other than what I use on my chipboard covers are cut into four by six pieces set aside a couple 
for your covers, but cut four by six pieces. This one is then, I trim it down to a four by five, and this one is a four by three and three eighths. I'm also going to have three that stay at four by six, and these are what creates the flap. So um, I'm also then going to do a fold at three and a half inches from one end, and so it's going to be um, asymmetrical. It's going to be a bigger section and a smaller section. The littler section, the, the, the smaller one, is going to slip down inside the envelope like so. See how that's creating the flap? The other one, again, the shorter side goes down inside the envelope on this side. Slips just nifty right down in there. Whoops. It only when you're on camera does it not want to go in smoothly. Okay, so, and then that fold goes right to that top edge. And see how that creates that flap? And then, same thing with this one over on the other side. The short end goes inside that little pocket and folds over. So that gives you a nice finished surface. And this one's going to create the flap for the next envelope over. So as you can see on the one that I've got the paper all, here's the flap. Here's the inside flap, you know, the pocket. This one wraps around to this side and tucks inside this pocket. This one here wraps around and tucks inside that pocket, whereas the other side tucks inside this pocket. It doesn't go all the way down, it just goes part way, which is sufficient, you know, to cover it. So then, after I get all of my paper coverings on there, in order to be able to get a tag out of here, I wanted to have a little pull area right here. So I take my circle punch, and if you don't already have it marked where the center line is, a lot of them, like the, the Marvi Yukita ones, have a little mark here and I just go with a sharpie marker and mark it easier because you know my eyes are getting old and I can't see as well and I just slip this on and now I eyeball it you know if you're really anal you can you can you know mark it but I put that little uh, middle line on the fold punch it and that just creates that little finger pull area and so that as you can see on this one that little finger pull so that I can get a hold of the tag a little bit easier so and that just slips right in. As I said, all the dimensions for these are on my um, my blog at following the following the paper trail .blogspot .com so that you can use the dimensions of using a standard envelope. Um, I, as I said, I cut these papers four inches because the standard envelopes are about four and five eighths, I think, um, or four and an eighth inch wide, or something like four and a quarter, four and an eighth. So a four inch um, fits down in there perfectly. I too cut my chipboard covers six inches by four and a half just because I like to have that little bit of, of extra on each side. Before you attach the, the short section of the first envelope, you want to cover it with paper. In the back, it, it's the long section of the last envelope attaches to the cover. Um, but it just is a, I just think it's just a super fun Super cute. It's got room for lots of stuff in here. Just a really fun, super easy uh, mini to make. Now I am doing up a couple of kits in this color combination. This is a brand new um, Can Company paper in kind of the aquas and soft greens and purples. And this one's going to be called Fresh Air. And then I've got one that's coming that's in these hot, hot reds and yellows and greens. And I'm calling it Caliente. I think that's span hot for Spanish in Spanish. I, you know, I have a hard enough time with English that on foreign language is just that foreign to me. So, um, I've always been impressed with people who can speak speak multiple languages. I had a German roommate my first year of college, and so I felt like I I was living in the UN because we had all the foreign students in our room. Um, she gave up on trying to teach me German. <laughs> Even the swear words, I couldn't get those right. So. <laughs> Anyway, so check out, um, you can check out my, uh, I'll be putting those those uh, kits up uh, later this evening so you can check out my Etsy store for that. But other than that, for the dimensions and other photographs, you can go to followingthepapertrail.blogspot.com to check it out. And so thanks for joining me for the second edition of What's Up Wednesday, and I'll be talking with you soon. Thanks.